good morning everyone. Thank you all so much for joining in. Uh, we're going to begin sitting cross legs either on a bolster or some sort of a raise or even a chair, whatever suits us best. So again, speed it for sitting tall. Lengthen the sides of the trunk. Just take the hands down either side there and then get that inward lift. Feel it for lifting up the inner body. So you're moving the back sacrum forward, get the length then in the side ribs, the pubic bones coming towards the navel and the navel to the chest. And then feel that broad action across the collarbones. So as we take the arms out wide, move the shoulder blades down the back, good, and then just join the palms together. And as we join the palms firmly, we're going to bring the base of the thumb joint into the breastbone. Relax the facial muscles. Feel the throat to soft and passive. And allowing the top eyelids to move down. And just observe where we are right now. Be aware of the breath. Nice easy in and out breath through the nose. Good, so allow the eyes to move back, the inner ears to become quiet, and the tongue is resting on the lower palate. Keeping that length from the top of the shoulders down to the elbows. And again, after the exhalation, we're taking a fuller, deep inhalation through the nose. And just explore where the breath goes. And on the exhalation, allowing the whole of the body to relax. Do it again, one more. Fuller, deep inhalation through the nose. And then just slowly breathe and out and let them go. Let them go of any thoughts we had before we come into the room. And we're going to concentrate on the yoga we're about to do. So again, just release the hands down to the knees. Drop the chin towards the chest. Slowly open up the eyes and raise up the head. Good. And we're going to come in to, um, actually we're going to sit where we are if you're comfortable. Change the cross of the legs there. And we're going to do, we're going to catch the hands behind the back to just open up the, the chest more. Feel that you're keeping the front ribs back and you're just crossing up the thumbs. So again, we're crossing this way. So you're changed, good, roll the shoulders back and down. Feel the shoulder blades move down and then feel the back ribs move in to open up the chest further. Good. And release. And then if whatever way you've crossed there, should it be a right index finger, change and we'll do the other side. So again, pull the arms down and back. And then allow the abdomen to stay soft. Feel it's not aggressive pull that you're getting that nice um, length on the sides of the neck there and the chest open and release. Now we're going to interlock the hands at the front, extend them forward and come up. Word for body and Guliasta. So again, keep length in the sides of the trunk there from the waist, elongate the arms, shoulders down. And see, can you keep the front ribs back? And then see, can we come further back with the arms? So you actually want to get the arms to come back behind the ears, but don't allow the head to push forward. Good, and release. And we're going to change that to lock up the fingers, slip one finger down below, and lengthen out again, and we're going to go up. So again, wherever we're sitting comfortable there, see, can you go on up and go higher? Good. Keep that length, lengthen 
the both under arms, outer arms, feel the sides of the trunk lengthening, relax the facial muscles, and then come on the way down. And release. So we're going to come in to um, add a book um, swastika or Adamuka Varasana. So we'll see when we come into Adamuka Varasana if we need support for the head when we come forward, have support. Um, and if you don't, that's fine as well. If you think you might need to be good support, probably you could use a blanket there. You can have it as big as you want or as light. But before we come into Adamuka, we're going to take the arms and extend the arms up, keep the hips well back on the heels and extend well forward. Two sides of the trunk is even and allow the forehead to come down. So again, it's all about extending the front body. Within these outer hips nice and firmly down. Good, keep an abdomen soft there as we come forward. And then come up. Spread the hands out wide. Good. Um, spread the hands wide, tuck the toes in, and go up into Adamuka Svanasana. So again, pressurize the hands firmly down. Get the sit bones to lift higher. And then feel that long extension in the both arms there. And then work the legs. So open up the back of the thighs. Just explore where we need to open more or extend more. Lift the chin away from the chest, but keep the back of the neck long. And then lift the toes up beyond the ball pad of the foot. Lift the toes up off the mat there and see can you get that strong action from the front of the ankles towards the heels. So bringing the heels back and down. Good. And then we're going to walk in and to you can ask that, lengthen the whole trunk forward, concave the back and see can you, you still get that spread at the back of the thighs. Lengthen the chin forward. And remember for us to don't go down easily, use the chair or the wall. Good. And then take hands to the hips, breathe in and come up. And we're all coming back from that. So we're going to stand again and Tadasana. Line the big toes up at the inner heels. Spread the toes wide. And then lift up each foot and pull the heels back and down. Feel it you're keeping the ankle bones touching. Pressurize the inner heels down. Shift the weight back onto the heels. Make the top of the thighs hip back and then extend the arms down. Good, so as you extend the arms, feel that you want to grow the arms longer there, and you want that lift at the top of the chest, tuck the chin in and take the head just slightly back. Good, and then we'll do Urdhva Hastasana. So extend the arms forward and come up. Both sides of the trunk is even. Good, keeping the weight back onto the heels. Shoulders down, go on lengthening the sides of the trunk more, and then come all the way down. And then we're going to do um, Gong Yukanasa, so take the right arm out to the side, keep that right shoulder well back, good, and then as you come across, you want to bring it across towards this left arm. So you're bringing it over, keeping that right shoulder back, then you're going to slide the hand nicely up the back as you bring this elbow down. This hand has to come up. So then big long reach for the top arm and take it down the back. And then you want to pull the bottom arm up, get the elbow lifting higher. If you can't reach, remember, use a towel layer or a belt or whatever we've got. So you just keep walking the hands towards one another. Good, elbow looking higher, and then come all the way back. Well done. Change, we'll do the other side. So again, extend the arm out long. Keep that top shoulder back as you turn the palm behind. Bring it across now so it can catch hold of your right 
Um, so if you don't catch easily, if you can't walk the back, just keep practicing at this one. Then slide the hand nicely right up and between the shoulder blades to open the chest again and go up and catch hold. And again, roll the outer arm, inner outer arm, um, inner arm out, <laughs> outer arm in. And again, try to get this action here that you're doing this action. So the outer to the other. And release and come down. Extend the arms long. Keep the chest lifted. Good. And then we're going to do uh, Yudkatasana. So we're going to be safe at two, three inches off the wall. We're going to sit down again. Feel the back of the pelvis is, is moving down the wall, the waist is at the wall, and extend the arms up. So keep the abdomen lifted. Keep the weight back on the heels there. Look forward, lengthen forward, and then just push off the wall. You keep that long extension in the both arms. Look up. Sit low in the seats. Then I'm here to come up and breathe the arms down. So we'll do one more. This time, making sure that you keep the back of the pelvis long and that we're not going, letting the tailbone come out. So slide down the wall. Keep the weight back on the heels there. Keep the shoulders back. Extend the arms up. Feel the, the waist till tight to the wall and lean forward. Look up and come up. So make sure that you keep the, the gaze up. Arms lifting higher. And then come all the way back up and take down the arms. Good. So in that pose, you don't want to feel that we're doing this action. As you come down, you're doing that out. You've got to keep that, the abdomen well lifted. Keep the back of the pelvis moving down. So the wall helps to teach us that direction. Right, so we're going to get ready now to do the Tita Trikonasana. If you want support each side there for your hand, use it, um, a brick or whatever. So we'll, we'll begin. Stand in the middle of the mat there, raise the arms up, bend the knees, jump and spread the feet apart. So again, pressurize the outer feet down. Feel that lift that we did just a minute ago in Yudkatasana. You've got to do that strong action now, which is harder to work when the legs is wider. You've got to lift the base of the abdomen up, keep that back rim of the pelvis moving down, and turn the whole of the right leg out. So you've got to spin that right leg from the very top of the thigh. Keep the buttock in, knees and thighs lifted, and extend this top arm, the right. So you want to keep this side as long as the left. So when we come down, take the hand to the the brick or down to the ankle, wherever you can reach, and turn the trunk and the chest. So a long get from the right hip to the right armpit. So wherever we need to be, head back. Turn the trunk and the chest more now. Keep the shoulders back from the ears. Good. Turn then to look up at the lifted hand. So if you close the top eye, you should see the thumb with the bottom eye. And breathe. Good. Long get the two sides of our trunk evenly. And then inhale to come up. Turn the right foot round. And just take the hands to the waist. So again, just feel where we are. There's an alignment good there of equal distance. And now turn the whole of the left leg out. So spin from the very top of the thigh. There. Pull up the knees and the thighs. Extend the left arm and go down. So again, you can hold the brick there if you need. And you don't want to feel that you're pushing into your joints. You want to feel that the legs is doing all the work and not the joints. So we'll turn the trunk and the chest. Keep the two shoulders back, head back. Close the top eye and see, can you see the thumb with the bottom eye? So right up at the top arm. And then feel that the bottom arm is lifting and extending the top arm up more. Good. And the heel to come up. Turn the feet to face front. And jump or step the feet together. 
Well done. So next one we're going to practice now is Virabhadrasana 2. So raise the arms up, bend and again take a big wide step. So go for a fairly wide stride, say three to three and a half feet apart. Now keep again the whole base of the abdomen and your arches lifted and turn the whole of the right leg out. Look down and see his heel aligned with that step of the foot. So now we'll extend the arms up, get the two sides of the trunk long and we're going to bend our right leg. So as we go down, keep hitting that right knee out, keep sucking that outer right buttock deep in, pull back with the left arm as you look out over the, the right. Good, go down. So feel like you've got a good right angle on the front leg. Then inhale, come up, turn the right foot in, and we'll go to the other side. So again, turn the whole of the left leg out. Feel that big turn from the very root of the thigh. And then extend the arms up. Lengthen the sides of the trunk. And here, and as we exhale now, we're going to bend our front. So again, as you go down, take the arms down, pull back with the right arm as you look out over the left. So again, keep drawing this outer left buttock deep in. Open the left groin. And heels come up, turn the feet to face front, and jump or step the feet together. So we're going to do Uttanasana, and we're going to be here with our feet Anthony will use a chair. So if you haven't got a chair, I'll show you what you can do. Um, so we're going to have the feet. It's hard to know exactly where to have the feet. So usually 12 inches away from the wall works good. Um, then you're going to have the chair at the very root here again, at the top of the thighs there. And you're going to pin your sit bones to the wall and we're going to come forward. And you do this. So again, you want to keep that chair, keep the legs working. If you want to rest your head on support, you can have maybe a block here. Chest is open, shoulders lifted, and instead of just collapsing over the chair, lengthen the sides of the throat. Shoulders lifted. Work the legs. See, for us that don't have a chair, um, like so, especially one like that, you can always come down with the roll blanket. So you may not have the roll too big, just have it about this much. And you want to feed it into the abdomen there to create that space and just come down. So you want to feel that spread at the back of the sacrum. Lengthen forward. Good, go on, keeping the sit bones lifting higher up the wall. Keeping the abdomen soft. And explore and feel how, where is the breath. Feel how the back ribs spread in the back of the sit. The legs is active, they're working. Look forward. And then push off the wall. Good, and look forward and come up. This is nice to the back. So we're all going to get ready now to do um, Virabhadrasana 1. So we're going to practice it from stepping out from the wall. Hands on the weights there. We're going to bring our left heel back to the skirting board. Slightly turn right that left foot and then take the right leg forward. And as you take the right leg um, well forward, feel again that you've got heel and line with heel or heel and line with us now. So you'll be able to watch me to see where I'm at there. Now we're going to bring this left um, half more forward and take the right half back. Good. Now you can extend the arms out long behind like we did earlier at the start of the class. Roll the shoulders back and down. Good. And then extend the arms up. Inhale, and as we exhale now, we're going to bend our right leg. So we're going down till a good right angle. Keep the firmness on the back leg. 
tailbone in, add strong lift in the base of the abdomen, the lower abdomen, and go down. Lift the chest, head, and look up. Good. Nice firmness as we go down, and then come up. Take the arms down, step the both feet together. So we'll do the other side. So again, feet together, and the middle of the mat there, and just go into Tadasana and recover, and then take our right foot back. Good, feel the heel touch, and then take the left leg forward. So again, take it a long stride out, three and three and a half feet apart. We keep that strong action on the back leg. Feel that spread from the base of the, the buttocks there, moving from inside out. Turn the hips, keep the arms back again and down, chest well open. Now raise the arms up and heel, and this way actually we're going to bend to the right ankle. So again, keep the firmness on the back leg. Good. Lift up. Head back. Go down and make a good right angle. Pull the left hip back and bring the right hip more forward. Lengthen the sides of the throat. And then inhale to come up. Step the both feet together. And we're out. Well done. So we're going to do Pada Hastasa now. I'm going to take the feet again, parallel, half distance apart, raise the arms up and here, and this way exhale we're going to come forward. So for us that don't come down easily, go to the chair, use the wall, half feet in asthma, remember. Now when you're here, lengthen the whole of the front body, bend the knees there and feel your chest resting on the, on the thighs, and then you're going to bring the whole of the hands onto the feet. Press the toes in and the wrist there, and then let go of the head. Shoulders lifted. Good. Chin into the breath. Keep the abdomen soft. Keep the shoulders lifted. Keep pressing the toes firmly now. Good. And then if you have any more space left, you always can widen the elbows out to the sides and allow the trunk to descend down. But it takes time for the trunk to descend down. Use the breath. And then you will look forward again. Release the hands. Lengthen forward. And breathe and come up. And we're all back from that. Well done. So now we're going to practice um, Virabhadrasana 3. Ardish, uh, we're going to do that very bit after three, and we normally practice with a chair. Tonight we're going to practice with two chairs. So we're going to have one in front, or you could use the wall for the hands, and you could have as well um, one for the hands at the front and one at the back. So I'm going to grab another chair. So good. So here we are. That's it. It's hard to get the distance. So bear with the last the three is the balance and pose as well. You want to get the extension in the front body and you want to get the extension in the back leg. So when we come here, we're going to be here and then we're going to bring our right foot back. You notice? So it's there. So it needs to do more. So bear, I will probably say back here. So just getting the right distance. So if we're here, check that this heel is extending over that chair. A little bit further. So it's good to just get the right distance first of all. There. So you want to keep the hips level. You want to draw up on the standing leg, lengthen the trunk forward, and then you've got to get the extension onto this back heel on the raised leg. So I'll give it a go. Good. So be in the middle of the mat there. Raise the arms up. Jump first, spread the feet apart. 
So um, you can always step back up your feet if you're too close to the chairs. So we'll turn the palms to face upwards and go up. Keep the shoulders down. Keep that length on the sides of the trunk. Now turn the left foot well in and turn the whole of the right leg out. Good. So inhale and as we exhale now we're going to bend the front leg. So I think I need to go back more. So go down, make a good right angle, lean forward, um, draw, I think I need to back up, draw this, um, I think I need to still go back and we're going to be here. So again you're going to just probably practice it from whenever you do one. So extend into that back heel, lengthen the sides of the trunk forward and feel it to have sustained level. Now you really don't have the toes pointed, stretch the heel. Open the backs of the both legs. Look forward. Good. Feel that nice long extension. Um, and then come all the way down. Down the feet and come up. So we'll do the other side. Well done. Um, it's hard to come back into very bit of the work from there. So here we are again. Just take the legs wide. Let's jump. Extend the arms, turn and come up. Now turn the whole of the right foot in, turn the trunk and chest and turn the left. So here we are, we're going to bend and do a right angle, lean slightly forward. So I think we still need to come back more. So we're here and then extend this um, back leg out long. Uh -huh. Extend and lengthen. Good, keep the two sides of our trunk even. Feel if the hips is level and reach. Look along the hands. Keep extending, opening the back of the thighs. Good, and then come all the way down. And come off. Brilliant. So stand and tadasana and recover. So it's nice done with the, you could even have your hands on the wall there and just have a chair behind if you don't have the two chairs. So what I'm going to do now, next of all, uh, Prasarita Padottanasana. So we're going to take the legs wide. First it needs support underneath their um, head, you can use it. Hands on the waist, lift the whole front body up, look forward and come down. So take the fingertips here, now walk the feet slightly wider if you feel that you're, you're having with your distance right there. Now walk the hands well forward and then press your outer feet firmly down. Lift your inner arches up as you lift. And then you're going to walk back with the hands here. Even take the arms further back if you can or pull the elbows down to the mat. Try to lengthen the trunk more. And then you take the hands back in between the both feet. You can go wider with the hands there. Feel your elbows hit your inner knees and then just allow the head to come down. So you want the shoulders lifted, pressurizing the outer feet down. Inner legs is to hit out. Shoulders up. And then look forward, walk forward, and walk the feet up. And back to center. Well done, everyone. So we're all going to get ready now to come down to our mats. We're going to be ready to come down. So we're going to have a... Um, a blanket to sit on there, or whatever you need for a raise, you can have um, support. So we're going to practice, first of all, uh, Janyi Sarasana. And we're going to practice with the chair. Again. So we're going to sit here uh, and take the legs long. If you don't need to have support to sit on, and you feel that you're not doing this action, you can, you know, just sit on your mat. But if you feel that you're short in your front body, or that you're, you're not getting that extension in the back of the legs there, 
then the seven arrays. So whatever height you need. So we're going to bend up our right leg. And you know as you bend up the right leg and you draw the heel back until it's on the groin, at that knee is floating in my there. It's good to have support towards your outer hip. So if you feel like you're not allowing the knee to go down, right? You could have a roll blanket and you're keeping the knee. So if your knee's floating up here somewhere, just have support under the knee. And then it allows that groin to open further and your pelvis is set. So we're going to raise the arms up. Now you lift the sides of the trunk up more. And inhale, and as we exhale, just come to look up the chair. So again, keep the whole back of this leg uh, open. Keep extending, keeping the inner legs really sharp. As you lengthen the whole front body forward. Good. Looking forward. Shoulders down. Then see, can we come further? And down, you can come maybe towards the seat. Drawing the abdomen back, keeping the abdomen soft. Go on extending and lengthening. So instead of trying to get your head to come down right away and shortening, we're going to go on extending and lengthening. Forward. So you want to extend past the foot. And then look up, shoulders relax down. Concave the back. And then come all the way back up. Cheese will be the other side. So again, we're going to now bend up our left leg. And it's always good to catch the back of the knee like so. So you're bringing the heel into the zone growing. Keep that sharpness on the inner legs again and allow the knee to drop. So if the knee's up here somewhere, remember, just to put the support on the knee or even put it here if you have a roll blanket just to the outer hip, just to keep the head of that femur bone up. Mm -hmm. And then extend the both arms. Lift up out of the waist there. Feel the bottom rib moving away from the abdomen. We inhale and as we exhale, we're going to go forward. So we're going to go really high first of all, shoulders relaxed down and look up. Extend and, and broaden the back of that right thigh on the mat. Chest is open. Use the breath. So with every exhalation, see can you go further. Shoulders down, then can you go further, forward, higher up on the seat of the chair. We are drawing the abdomen, keeping it soft, keeping it attached to the lumbar spine. Mm -hmm. And then see if you can go all the way further. But we try to go more forward. And we'll keep the spread in action here. Catch the foot, do so, but for now we're just staying with the chair. Or you can be upright. You can hold here easily, be here, if not, it's nice to be there. And then come all the way back. Join the both legs together. So the next one we're going to practice is Pachi Mutadasa. And we're going to do it with either a blanket, like we did earlier, at the wall, or you can do it with a poster, or whatever you've got. So if you've got a thick blanket there, um, I'll even show us with the blanket as well. So let's blanket first. So you have your blanket again, rolled up there. And again, you'll be sitting on a raise if you need a raise. And then you keep the abdomen here, you extend the arms up and again you're going to come forward. So again it's nice the support there that keeps the abdomen soft and keeps it more relaxed. Now if you're using the boats there if you've got one you want to have it here and then it's, it's trying to get that lift of the bottom ribs away from the abdomen. The legs are still working really strong there they're active and you're coming forward again, shoulders down. So you're spreading the whole back of the legs now further to the mat. Extend the inner heels. 
Throw the abdomen back and keep the front ribs lifted. So we're not collapsing down here or here. We're, we're keeping that broadness. Quietness. And then you can allow the head to, to rest there on support. If you can come forward easily, you could allow the forehead to come even down onto your support. That looks good. Feels good. Thank you. So for us that can come forward easily, you can rest your forehead too. And then we're going to come all the way back from that. Good. And we're going to now sit in Varasana. So for us that do not sit in Varasana easily, um, I would say use some support for in between the both knees. So you want to keep the knees together, roll the calf muscle out there, or even just not roll it out, but keep it, roll it back, and then sit comfortably in between the both heels. Making sure that all ten toes is back. Keeping the chest lifted. Then take the arms out wide, join the palms together, and turn the little finger side right up the back. So you're, you're keeping the tops of the shoulders back, and the shoulder blades is moving down and to the back ribs to open the front of the chest. So elongate from the top of the shoulders down to the elbows. This is really nice as well. So nice for the shoulders. Opens the whole front body. Keep the abdomen soft. Shoulders relax down. And then release. Good. Then we're going to still stay in Varasana. So we're going to stay here again and then we're going to get ready now to do our next one, which is we're taking, doing another gong you can ask me, taking this right arm back, slide it up, extend the top arm and then we're going to come forward. So if you don't come forward easily, if you just say this before we start, Maybe have support again for your head in front, or have support even um, if you feel that that's not comfortable come forward in Varasana, you can always join the big toes, you call it Vajrasana. So you would have the big toes just touching there, sitting in between the heels, going forward that way. So again, now lengthen forward with the end, and allow the head to go down. Now come all the way back up and release the arms. I'm glad I can't hear you all commenting on that one. <laughs> I love to know. And now take this arm right to the side. Again, whichever way we want to sit there, even cross leg. So you're sliding the hand up the back into the gum, you can ask it. Stand the top arm. Roll that top arm right up there. Elbow staying close to the ears. And extend and go forward. Good. And then nice and slowly come up. And we're all back from this. So again, you could come forward as well with the hands uh, up the back. Now as to the cuisine, you can come forward like that. So you can come forward with any of the shoulder ones. Good, and we're just going to release out the legs now. Take the hands uh, out to the side here. Um, tuck the toes in and go up. Just open up the back of the knees. Don't be too forceful, just quietly. Draw the abdomen back. Allow the head to just drop. Keep the length, shoulders lifted. Feel the whole of the arm for the chest opening towards the front of the thighs. And then if you need to walk the feet further back, do so. So explore and come down. 
So don't always just be happy with doing it one way, you know, all the time. Say, no, this is my distance, heels go down, I'm comfortable there, I'm going to stay. Try to not do that. Try to give ourselves challenges in our time just to do a wee bit further. So now we're going to sit down Varasana again and we're going to do Sutta uh, Varasana. So we're going to sit down again in between the both heels. We're going to not have the bolster jam right up into the sacrum there. Have it slightly more far away from the, um, the back of the sacrum. You should have a bit of fist in here and then we go down. Now we can extend the arms up and take them back. So you want to let the front of the thighs lower. You want to keep that space on here. Remember, you can bring a hand in through there. It shouldn't be right jammed up into the sacrum because then the abdomen gets pushed forward. So you want the abdomen to be soft and relaxed. And for us that don't go down easily, stay there everyone. Uh, for us that don't go down easily, I'm going to show us how we can go down as well. Or uh, well, uh, not go down so much. Uh, we could go more. Um, we could have a bolster set here. And we would use the wall obviously so the chair is not going to move. And then you can go back. So you can sit on support, probably that's what's wrong with it because we're not getting back that way up. We can sit back on your heels. So you have the bolster say here or um, the back of the sofa, whatever you've got. And you will be here. And then you can just move back. It's really nice and comfortable too. You're still getting the whole effect of the front of the thighs lengthening and you can roll back so you can adjust it to whatever height you need so that's really comfortable for us that don't like that comes away a lot good it's done just like so mm -hmm. and then nice and slowly we're going to come up from that uh -huh. And then we're going to do the um, next one is up to be the Konasana. So we're going to sit on the corner edge of the blanket again, if you need. And we're going to take the legs out wide. So we extend from the inner groins to the inner heels. Good. Keep the hands back. Feel like you're opening the whole back of the legs there. So you're opening the back of the thighs. You lengthen the calf muscles and you're taking the fingertips down and extend to the inner heels. Good. Keeping that broadness across the collarbones. Keeping the lift on the chest there. For us, for us that don't come forward comfortably, I'm going to do a wee move the belt first to show us what we can do. So we're going to raise the arms up, lift up out of our seat, and here, and as we exhale now, we're going to come forward. So again, like we did earlier, we used the chair for forward uterasness there, and our forward bend. So you're going to extend forward, stay upright more, and feel the back of the legs hitting strongly onto the mat, catch hold of the big toes, and look up. So this is nice for us that can catch comfortably. If you don't catch comfortably, you can always have a two belts there or two lips and sit tall. So again, as you sit tall, feel observe your lower back. The sacrum has to move in. You get that strength in your lower back. Roll the shoulders back and down. Elongate. The both legs there, extend the inner legs away. Feel that sharpness there. Roll the shoulders back and down. So it's nice to practice as well with two belts if you haven't got them. Um, if you don't go here, you don't want to end up doing something like this. 
Nothing's happening there. Oh my, give her yourself. Show your shoulders. And then we're going to stay there. If you feel you can, for us that can catch the feet easily, we're going to come forward with the chin to a brick. Just to a brick. Or you can bring your chin to the back. But you want to feel that you're um, rolling from the inner groins out. Good. Then feel that rolling in on the calves there. And you're going to be here. Shoulders back, chest, lengthening more forward. So as if you want to extend the big toes more forward. And then come all the way back up. Well done everyone. Could you be using belts or whatever? That's brilliant. And then we're going to turn to our right. So as you turn to the right, take the right hand round behind. Extend the left arm. Inhale and as we exhale, go towards the right foot. Extend the mound of the big toe more forward. Now feel the side ribs. Use the right hand to get us more of a turn. Good. Look over that right foot and then see can you join the hands. So earlier we were using the chair there. If you don't catch the foot, you can always um, have a belt, even on the one hand, and turn the trunk with this hand. Feel the whole left side ribs move forward. And then come up. Now again, we're going to go to the left. We'll take the right hand forward. Take the left arm well back and extend the right arm. And here, and this way, it's going to go to the left. And then catch hold of your left foot. Use this left hand to evolve the trunk and the chest more right. Good. Breathe into that stretch. Good. Elongate the whole right side of the trunk more. Good. Turn and then hold. Sit tall. Keep that outer right hip firmly down. Move the breastbone forward and come up. Good. And we're back to, we're going to draw the both legs in and we're going to sit in Baddha Konasana. Again, both feet together, allowing the knees to go down. Feel your knees sit closer towards your, your heels. Sit up there, good. And then allow the knees to go down. Catching the both feet. You can use this as well if you feel you want to put the hands to the mat and just be here. So really good opening on the groins. And again, see can we go forward. So if we go forward again, you don't want the knees to fly up. If they do, you're going to sit maybe higher and stay upright. Just you work on that like so. And then we can go forward. We're going to bring the, the, the forehead to the brick. Allow the knees to go down. And if you feel that you want to have your brick lower, you can go that wee bit lower. For me, I like to be higher. It's a bit too high, but it's nice to rest the forehead. That allows the brain to become quiet. And then Bring the both knees together and extend the legs long. Well done, everyone. And now we're all going to get ready to do Malasana. So again, we're going to be on the knees here. For us to do Malasana easily, you can squat easily. Brilliant. You can sit on the heels there. The both feet together. And you want to sit down on our heels and we're like so. Uh, for us to do not do that very easily, we're going to have a bit of support under the heels. So you could have a rolled mat there on the edge of a blanket, whatever we've got. So you just bring it underneath the heels, not the whole foot. Then you sit down as low as you can. The more your knees go slightly out, I'm going to show us like the side front of you. Um, the more the knees go slightly out, you don't want them to go all out too wide. You want to keep a bit of compactness there. So as you come forward, you want to feel that the knees are squeezing the sides of your throat. Mm -hmm. And then they're still, you feel mine still squeezing in here. And you're going to extend forward and allow the head to go down. So we're here. Keep the knees in. To do the full pose, again, you can have a brick in front. 
Look, go for whatever you've got there. So we're still sitting down on the heels there. You're going to bring the arms back, the whole of the hands behind the heels. And then you're going to allow your forehead to come down. But the whole secret is to keep the, the buttocks low. Mm -hmm. So we're here. Heels is down and the head down. And again, not letting the knees go out. So it's all a bit round in the back, that convex back, not the concave, but we're trying always to flatten it down, we're allowing it to be soft and round. Good. And we're all back from that. So we're going to finish off with Sethi Banda. So a nice way to practice, or um, Sethi Banda start with Yasna. So we're going to have our booster say here. Or if you don't have a booster, you can use the brick. I'm going to show us from here. And you would be, you're going to have some, so you can, if you can bring your heels to the ground, that's fine. If not, you're going to have maybe about a height for the heels to come down onto here. So I'll just show us from here. You sit on the poster. And then you're going to slide your, you lie on the poster, slide yourself towards the head side and you, you can feel how the shoulders are starting to come down gradually. Now don't let them go down too fast. Again, feel like you're, you're not letting them go too fast. You're going to then stretch the legs out long and then gradually let the shoulders come down. So you want the poster to be in the Top chest there, to open up the collarbones, shoulder blades moving deep into the back ribs to open the, the chest. And then the arms can be by the sides. So for us that don't have that arrangement um, with the holster, we're going to use a brick. And we'll just do set you back. So we're going to lie down, pick up again. And again, get the brick into the sacrum tailbone area, not too high up the, the back there onto the lumbar. Make sure you walk the hands down to lengthen the sides of the, of the neck and just be here. So you want the whole of the, again, the back of the head to be down on the, the mat. Throat soft and passive. And it's to be soft, easy breath there. Abdomen soft. Good. And then if you want to go higher than that brick, you can see, can you go above the brick? So you would be, you can go higher. So you want to bring the chest closer towards your chin. The arms out long, and then we're going to come up again off the brick and nice and slowly come down. And for us that's on the poster, we're going to slide our head um, towards the slide our body towards the head side to come off the poster. Slide up, roll to the side, and then bring the feet more forward, allow the back to settle there, and then roll round and come up. Well done. Such a good pose that practice. Um, helps to open up the back of the lungs. So we're all going to get ready now for relaxation. You can do a pretty cranny with the legs up the wall. Support for onto the head if you need. Or you can lie in Savasana with your legs just rolling out to the side. So as we lie in Savasana again, I'm just going to Lie down for whatever support we need for the head. Um, over here. Feel like you're going to bring that support to the very top of the shoulders, not onto the shoulders, but just to the top. So it supports the neck and the head. Then you're going to lift the buttocks up there, lengthen the back of the sacrum, and then allow one leg to go out and then the other. You can even have the legs together, as if you're doing Tadasana. And then you just allow the feet to roll out to the side. So Savasana, this way is lovely as well. 
Uh, or you can do prone savasana, which was lying on our tummy. We did that like one week, and we're all ready for relaxation. So whatever way is comfortable for us. Down to knees. Again, when we're ready and comfortable there, we're going to allow the eyes to be soft. And the eyes is close to the brain, so allow the eyes to soften. And move back into the darkness. Allowing the ears to become quiet, the jawbone is slightly open, and the tongue is resting heavy at the back of the throat. Feeling the skin on the forehead. Soften down towards the, the bridge of the nose. The sides of the throat is soft and passive. And aware of that warmth coming all the way out from the shoulders down the arm. Keeping the fingers just naturally curved. Allowing the both hips to drop heavily down into the mat. Slow, so 
Namaste. Mm -hmm. 